Okay, let's take a look at some crazy bikes. Some of the things that we thought at the time were maybe trend setting of the future, but maybe didn't turn out quite like that. Let's dive in. First up, Giovanni Bonazzi's speed record bike. Giovanni Bonazzi is a legend in mountain biking. You might not have heard of her, but she was a pioneer for women's mountain biking and mountain biking in general in Italy, where she's from. She's a two-time world downhill champion and twice held this world speed record. The bike she did it on was a bit crazy too, even more so when you think that it only had minimal suspension. Her last speed record took her all the way to 158 kilometers per hour, which is just short of 100 miles an hour. Her bike was something else too. It had an XC Marzocchi fork with only 51 mil of travel. And the bodywork was built in one piece around the frame. It was made of polystyrene um, and that was the mold and the fiberglass was laminated around it. The forks also had aerodynamic fairings too, but just looking at it, the massive gearings, those tiny brakes, the quill stem on a threaded headset, it's ludicrous to think that was done on this bike. It's crazy. And talking of wild, the Cannondale Fulcrum. During the 90s, there were few brands that could come close to the craziness of Cannondale. Their Fulcrum is a perfect example. It was a prototype downhill bike that pushed the limits of design. Downhill tracks were super long at the time and the bikes were running massive chain rings and often had to change them to suit the courses. This significantly affected the suspension performance under pedaling and since the courses required a lot of pedaling, the performance was affected too. Cannondale's approach was to isolate the chainring on the suspension design. They created a jack shaft design that incorporated three chains and a lot more chainrings that would allow the gear ratio to be changed without affecting the suspension. The Fulcrum also had some other quirks too. It featured adjustable headset cups to change the head angle. It had Cannondale's dual crown inverted head shock forks. These were the predecessors to the lefty. The result was a super heavy and over-designed bike that never got past the prototype stage, but it did win races. The Honda RN01. Whoa! The notorious Honda downhill bike is without doubt the perfect example of what makes this list awesome. It debuted in 2004 and was piloted by Greg Minar, Matty Lekoinen, Brendan Fairclough and Cyril Kurtz. And Minar took this to several victories, including the World Cup overall win in 2005. What made it special was the super secret gearbox drivetrain. They literally removed it off the bike overnight to make sure no prying eyes ever got a glimpse of their secrets. Eventually, the secret did get out and the gearbox was a cassette and derailleur system, but it was more complicated than that. Because of the positioning, the weight was much better um, with a low center of gravity, and because the freewheel wasn't at the rear wheel, it meant you could shift without pedaling. A lot of the Honda R01 was bespoke too, including the Showa suspension. Honda took a full bore approach to their entry into the sport, but after four successful years, Honda decided to pull out of downhill racing. To this day, they're still pretty secretive about the RN01, and it's rumored that they only just allowed Minar to keep one. All the others are under lock and key, but it's a beautiful bike. That frame is incredible. I wouldn't mind seeing Honda take another shot at it, you know. The slingshot, <laughs> my God. Uh, for a bike with such a radical ideology, the slingshot was surprisingly successful. I mean, if someone were to bring a bike out nowadays that had a cable instead of a down tube, it wouldn't see the light of day. But in the 90s, anything was possible. It was the Wild West. Let's have a closer look though. That cable needed to be tensioned and it did so with a threaded bar and spring at the head tube. On top of that, the top tube needed to have a bit of flex in it. So you can see that flex point near the seat tube. It's supposed to provide a controlled flex in the system similar to suspension, but significantly shortened the bike while it flexed. It's something that I'm sure we're all happy to see in the past, but. I'm quite enjoying looking at it today. Here's a special one, the Random Tandem. Ah yes, love this bike. This bike has scared many people who've had the misfortune of riding on the back of it. 
Um, if you've ever, ever ridden on the back of a tandem, the fear is real. Now multiply that by a large number and add me onto the front, cackling away, then you get closer to fear than anyone ever wants to be. Probably the only one who was up for the mayhem really was Blake, who was willing to take it down a line in Whistler and hit the jumps. Whether he'd do that again, well, who knows. The bike itself is a custom e-tandem made by Nikolai. It's made to take the bucket seat for me up front and as a normal rear seat uh, position for the rider or passenger in many cases. It's built for rowdy riding with its Fox 40 up front and a coil rear shock. It's a banger. The Trek 69er. Back at a time when 29 inch wheels were only starting to trickle onto the scene, Trek thought the best way to introduce them was at a time with the 69er and then it was born. Its name was bold and accurate and possibly is one of the reasons why it's maintained a cult following. It was a retro mullet bike with a 29 inch front wheel and a 26 inch rear wheel. It came at a time where 27.5 wheels might have been an idea at the back of someone's mind, but were far from reality. Some people loved them, but others thought that it was just awful. Add in the fact that many came in a single speed option and you can see the niche that it drew on. Definitely one for the history books. Bender Bike by Carpiel. Josh Bender is another legend in the sport. He's well known for throwing himself off cliffs that no one else would ever dare do. And because of the magnitude of his sends, he needed a bike to match. So Carpiel came up with this crazy creation. They created him a custom Carpiel Apocalypse just for him, just for hucking himself off mad cliffs. The bike had 12 inches of travel front and rear and a 24 inch rear wheel and a 26 at the front. It had one goal in mind. It was surviving 50 foot drops. In today's standards, it's extremely short and upright, very tall, and we couldn't imagine what it would be like to ride for us, but Bender loved it and it worked, sometimes. Scott Octane DH. The Scott Octane DH was born at a time when downhill bikes were going through wild transformations. Sp suspension travel was picking up, dual crown forks were now the standard, and brands were trying to find out ways to get the edge on the tracks. Scott focused on the suspension design. They thought that maybe two shocks was better than one, and so the entire front triangle was filled with dampers. But they didn't stop there, because they also had the idea that two saddles would be better than one. Motocross bikes have extended saddles, so why not downhill bikes? They didn't last very long, but the Octane DH has remained a distinctive bike at a time when Wild was par for the course. Nikolai Nucleon Bikes. There's already been one mad Nikolai bike in this list, but even that one pales in comparison to these next ones. There were few brands who could compete with Cannondale's sense of madness in the late 90s and early noughties, but Nikolai was one of them. Their Nucleon range of bikes from 2003 was something else, each weirder than the last. Starting off with the Nucleon FR, this was their free ride bike at a time when free ride was at its peak. It had between 130 and 230 mil travel and used a roll off 14 speed internal gear hub, which was fitted inside the front triangle. So it's essentially a gearbox bike all the way back in 2003. The Nucleon DH was their downhill oriented frame set and also featured 130 to 230 mil travel. It had a mad industrial looking swing arm that looked all but indestructible. But it was a crazy looking bike and we really, really loved it. They are ones that go down in history. Was your favourite bike that's a legend in its own right on this video? Let us know in the comments section down below. Um, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, I'd really appreciate a like on this video or a subscribe to GMBN. And until next time, I'll say goodbye.